Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for being here today. Uh, we certainly appreciate your time as um, we are all very busy these days and just taking time to be here is, uh, is most appreciated again. Uh, welcome to our second Lunch and Learn event uh, called Ingredients for Successful Engagements. My name is Herman Sacristan and I am the Head of Marketing and Customer Experience for X1 in Slough, UK. Uh, just in case anybody wonders, as we have people watching this presentation from their offices, uh, we just pretty much what we do is just to help customers get a better investment uh, when they buy marketing services or print from us. That's, that's basically what we do. And if anybody's interested to find out more about ourselves, you can visit us at uh, x1.ltd.uk. Um, Ingredients for successful engagements uh, are, again, second lunch and learn event. Uh, the agenda for this event is that we'll start with a short presentation from myself and then we'll, we'll move to, to enjoy this wonderful delicatessen of sandwiches and desserts and stuff like that. And you have an, an opportunity to, to network and connect and talk uh, with other marketeers in the room. Uh, obviously asking me any questions and everything will be based on this topic of ingredients for successful engagements, which I believe that is very relevant for everybody these days in the marketplace, as um, obviously good, effective engagements will bring sales to, to all of our companies. So without further ado, I'm just going to start this short presentation and I'm going to start it with the first ingredient that I believe that everybody will agree with me, uh, that is information. And with this, I'm not gonna say that this ingredient is the most important, even though it's very powerful. You'll see throughout this presentation that there are other ingredients that if they don't take place, even if we'll have good information, then the engagement will be, chances are that the engagement will be unsuccessful. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this ingredient information because actually our first lunch and learn event was based on information. It was called, what is data useful for? And you can actually access that presentation by going again to the x1.ltd.uk and under X1 Marketing Library, you can go to the X1 lunch and learn events and this is a recorded version of the presentation and you can deep dive to this information uh, topic. Also, very quickly, on the, on the yellow bar, um, marketing reading suggestions, you will have a white paper also about information. But I cannot move forward uh, without having a little bit touch the surface of information. And the two critical things, I think that everybody will agree with me that information is critical to reduce our risk of making, uh, obviously, better decisions. Information is critical to make better decisions. If we don't have information, most likely we're completely blind and we, again, we increase the risk of, of making the wrong decisions. And information, very, very relevant to this topic today, is critical to have a successful engagement. And I think that everybody agrees with that, but if there is any skepticism out there, I will, ask you, I will ask you to ask yourself a very simple question. Is it easy to sell something to somebody that you know? Is it easy to sell something to a friend or somebody that you don't know? And I think that everybody agrees that it's much easier to sell to somebody that you know because you have information about that person and you can increase your relevance. And we all know that relevance is key for a successful engagement. So they, this is basically um, what, what the, the, the biggest point when I talk about information. Now, having information uh, is not enough if you don't have it or if we don't have it organized in a way that is functional. I've seen a lot of marketeers with a lot of information, but they are not doing really well because the information is not organized properly, like any other thing in life. If we have something but it's not well organized, then it, it, it doesn't become very functional. So the way that we organize information in, I'm talking customer engagements or, or market engagements uh, 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 programs, um, is organized by profiling. Um, 
Um, because it's the profiling that will drive actually the strategy, will drive the messaging, the creativity, the incentives, the timing, when are we going to send them, the persistency, how many times we're going to talk to that target, and even the channels, if we are going to use uh, direct mailing or email, or we are going to follow up with a telemarketing call. So the information is organized based on profiling. And the profiles, that all this information is on that video that I mentioned at the beginning of, the, of this presentation. The profiles normally are based on personal characteristics and lifestyle, shopping style, when, where, and how much, buying criteria, what are customers buying from us, based on what criteria, and, and customers buy it from us for many different reasons. That's why it's important to organize this information profile so we can be more relevant when we talk to our customers. Purchase history for all the cross-selling and upselling strategies, and where are these customers in the sales cycle so we can be more relevant. So just to wrap up this information thing, information is critical for to get to achieve relevance on a, on a, on a customer engagement but information need to be organized to be successful and to be functional. And we organize it in this particular case uh, based on profile by profiling customers based on the information that we have about them. And this is a, a very quick example of how profiling and organizing information in the right way brings fantastic results. This is, in my opinion, one of the most successful campaigns that I've seen in the last 30 years that I've been doing marketing. Mm -hmm. This was done for ING did this in Australia. And just basic information create, create a basic profiling. These people that were selling retirement services, private retirement services. Obviously, the age is critical. That part of information is critical. That profiling is critical because people by profile by retirement services um, based on their age the, the, the message will be completely different the value will be different if you engage in somebody that is 23 years old versus somebody that is 58 years old so the ing did a fantastic job in australia and um, they they also profile people based if they are married or not, because that's very critical too. In this particular example that I have here, there's only couples, but there were other uh, direct mailers that they were for a female or a male. And yes, you know, a, a good image, uh, a, a good personalization with different images that resonate better with different target audience. The, the, the copy was um, a slightly different. There was a a, a, an incentive of winning a car, uh, which is a very appealing incentive. And, and this simple profiling mechanism being very relevant, thank you to information and being organized in the right way, brought results of total funds rollover of almost 90 million. This campaign had 181,000 records, so they targeted 181,000 people and it brought all these you know, in sales. So when, when we do things right, I'm not saying that this is going to happen every time, but we increase our chances of doing fantastic campaigns and getting fantastic return on investment when we do our marketing. <clears throat> the second ingredient, very, very important, is sensitivity. Because having information is not enough. If you have information but you are not sensitive in the way that you're using this information and respectful, then customers, they are going to ignore you. They are going to ignore us. And I think that we all been recipients of marketing contacts from companies that they are insensitive, even though they have a lot of information about us. And us, as customers and consumers, we completely rejected them and ignored them, even though sometimes they were saying something that was relevant to us. So sensitivity, is very, very critical. Many years ago, and it's still relevant, the Garnet Group just brought this up, this quadrant. And again, this presentation is going to be recorded, it's being recorded, and it will be uploaded to our website, X1 um, Lunch and Learn event. So if you want to revisit this presentation and, and sit on some of the slides a little longer, you'll be able to do that in the future. But what Garnet Group said, he said it was all about 
a good engagement with sensitivity is about the perceived level of targeting and the actual level of targeting. What he's trying to say is that the customer, the recipient, it doesn't need to feel that you really know a lot about them and you hardly, you targeted them really, really hard, but at the same time, you need to be relevant enough to use you know, the right message based on the information that you have to make it relevant and to make it targeted. So balancing these two is really critical. The best example that I have for this for sensitivity, it goes back to a good salesperson. I always say that marketing, we call in the best salesperson. I always say that most salespeople, 80% of their work is doing marketing, is promoting their brands, promoting the their products, promoting the services, and actually selling. They don't sell every day. They sell a couple of times a week, a couple of times a month. But the, most of the time, they're doing marketing, and they're doing marketing face-to-face, -face, which is very interactive, very real, and we need to really learn from these people. But when I go back to this good salesperson, a good salesperson most of the time knows a lot about their customers, but the customers don't necessarily know that I know what I know. But what I do, I use what I know to be relevant to you, but you don't know that I'm using it. And this is this exactly the same thing for traditional marketing. Just because we know something, it doesn't give us the right to be over familiar. We don't really have a, a relationship with that person. And, and, and it doesn't give us the right to be rude just because we know somebody. We still have to be sensitive. Also, because we know somebody and because it's very easy today and very inexpensive in, in some ways to contact as many people as we want, it doesn't give us the right to bombard people with, 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 with um, uh, contacts just for the sake of it, to see if something sticks. So my recommendation here for sensitivity, ask yourself when you do your marketing thing, would I do that face to face? Would I contact this customer face to face right now? And if the answer is no, just don't do it because you are going to create the same reaction as if you did a face to face. If you don't have a good excuse, if you don't have something interesting, helpful, and informative just to contact your customer or even entertaining just to contact your customer, don't do it at all. And by the way, it's okay to do a campaign to keep the relationship going with a customer or a target uh, list by sending some entertainment things, maybe by sending a funny video. Why not? We've been doing entertaining from a marketing perspective for hundreds of years. Salespeople, they talk in an entertaining way to build a relationship with their customers, but they always, a good salesperson, always has something an excuse to talk to a target, something helpful, informative, or entertaining to say. And I, I will ask everybody to do the same thing. Just because it's easy to send an email, just because it's cheap to send an email, or any other channels that we have these days, don't just uh, contact people for the sake of contact people. Be sensitive, because it's a critical ingredient to have a, a successful um, contact engagement. Creativity. Mm -hmm. I just had a little quick sip of water. Um, so you might have the right information and you might be very sensitive with the way that you're using that information. But if you are not creative enough, nobody's going to listen to you. We've seen, all of us, we've seen so many, just not only marketing campaigns, but also people, when they promote it to us, that even though they are sensitive, respectful, and they have information, they lack of creativity, so we can hear the message almost. So in order for the, to capture the attention of our target, which is a critical step in marketing, and to reinforce our message, we need to add creativity. Now, how do we add creativity? We have a couple of samples here that we've been using at X1. And this is a brilliant one that combines video and print. So even though I have the right information and I'm going to use it in the right way with you know, being respectful and being sensitive, I'm going to put in a format that is going to capture the attention of my customers and they're going to listen to me. I'm going to use video for a, a more emotional 
and, and fan engagement, if you wish, and I'm just going to support that video with text or print that, uh, and images that is going to support that, that, that video uh, format. And this, I'm increasing my chances of by being creative, then just um, getting the attention of my customers and reinforcing my message so I can get sell or whatever I'm hitting the objective of what I'm trying to hit. And when you look at this product sometimes, I can tell you this is not a product that costs 30 or 50 or, or whatever pounds, um, but it's not a, an inexpensive flyer that costs a couple of P or whatever it is. I'm, I'm not very familiar with, with pricing uh, uh, these days. But what I'm telling you, when we look about pricing and we look into that to, uh, uh, through this presentation, yes, you look at a product that is creative enough, just because the price it might be a little high, that doesn't mean that it's expensive. And we need to use this creativity in a very strategic way. Maybe you decide, maybe this is not a product to send to 20,000 people in your target list. But maybe this is a product to send to your top 500 customers that you want to impress this year to, to encourage them to keep buying from you and buying more. Or 300 prospects that you really want to get into and you really want to do business with them and you utilize this type of product. So I've seen marketeers offering that you just offer them creativity through this type of products and they say, well, but this is, I understand that the value is there. I understand that the price is not even high, but it's just too high for my budget. Maybe we need to organize our budget and spare our budgets a little bit more strategically. And I'll talk about that because another great ingredient uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a engagement, in a successful engagement is money and budgets. Uh, clearly, without money and budgets, we cannot engage anybody. Uh, so we'll talk about uh, that a little bit further. Another, another great example of creativity is, is the chocolates Mini Cooper did in the UK. They seek chocolates, high quality Belgian chocolate. This is, this is a direct mailer. You can put your chocolates in this direct mailer. You can have a great message. It's going to capture the attention of your target or your recipients. And you're going to touch their hearts because chocolates, they always do. And, and then they're going to listen to you. That is it's a hard thing to do these days in the marketplace because everybody's talking really loud. And it's another great strategy to, to add creativity to your message, to your, the information that you have that you know, is going gonna, gonna to transform into a message. And that sensitivity that we were talking about. And another product that... This product is not, I don't even know the, the price, but it's not 50p, but I can, I can tell you it's just a, a very few couple of, of pounds. It's not very, very expensive, and it can be utilized uh, really great. Um, now, another of our top products with Creative, I'm not trying to sell you anything here. I'm just, of course, I'm trying to sell you something, but at the same time, I'm trying to give you ideas that you can utilize with Creativity to, to, to increase your return on investment and to make your engagement more successful. This is what we call a hold and fold. It's about three or four pages on this product. It's paper-based. And this is like a, a Japanese origami. So you flipping the things and you're getting different images. In this, in this case, we did it with, with a friend of ours um, that, that actually posted. We took a, a picture and, and a posture for this, for this type of uh, uh, marketing uh, uh, activity. Uh, but you can have different messages, and I think that it's up to four different images. And then you send this to your customers, and it's a fun way of, of engaging with your customers and being in the memory because it was fun. And then you can drip those messages and tell them something, and then they, they flip the, the, the thing to a different way, and it's a different message and a different message. So, just a, a, a good way of telling your story, you know. So this is another another example that creativity really does. It, you know, I'm gonna pass this one. This is a, another creative product that, uh, but I think the marketing is they looking for marketing ideas. So I'm sharing a few of, of them here in this presentation. It's, it's a synthetic base paper that it doesn't break. So if you want your messages never to be ruined if there's a spill of coffee, tea, water, or whatever, you can put on this type of paper, uh, you send it, it's unbreakable, and, and actually can be washed and all those things. Uh, we've done this one ourselves, this match with inspirational quotes that customers like, 
we send them to them and we make sure that those inspirational quotes, because they like, they are gonna be with these customers for maybe a year or two, or at least for a few months. How inexpensive this, um, this creativity is when it's gonna be close to your customer for so many days. There is mouse mats, there is a, a, a coffee mats, tea, uh, drinking mats, all these type of things that we can use creative way to put our message and actually be close to our customers for as long as we can to make our marketing investment really great. Um, now, I know a couple of uh, our customers, they're looking into maybe uh, giving calendars away uh, in the next couple of months. The calendars is still very powerful if they're innovative and they're creative because they spend a lot of time with our customers. I know that everybody has their schedules and the diaries in their iPhones, etc., etc. But a good calendar always makes the trick, and it's a fantastic uh, idea, creative idea. If we do it in an innovative way, to be there for the next 365 days and be very close to our customer, so we can give them a mouse mat with the calendar. Uh, we can do mouse uh, uh, coffee mats or tea cups with the, with the calendars and have our brand in there. This is another creativity good idea. There's some scratch-offs from a calendar. Maybe you want to hide different offers throughout the year so that your customers they are going to keep your calendar and have your brand in there. Another great creative idea to have your messages there. Funny things like balloons in a calendar. Your customer, I've never seen a calendar that is a balloon. In the box, you have all your branding. Another creative way of engaging customers and things like this we've seen before. And, and again, with the calendars, um, Personally, this is my personal opinion. I still believe that they're very powerful if they are innovative or creative enough. And if the customers they use say you'll be there for 365 days. And because the time is right now, uh, going into the months when people think about selling the calendar, no, I just thought it was very relevant in this presentation. Uh, another creative idea that actually we have, we have some relief imaging that we can add some texture to your to your branding, to your marketing materials, to your engagement as a creativity. And, and if anybody wants a, a few, we have a few examples of all these uh, creative ideas in the room that you can uh, touch and feel what we have in our sandwiches and dessert or whatever. But if anybody that is offline uh, watching from the office, if you want any samples of this, just please contact us. But again, you can actually touch and feel these tires. I mean, you see it, it's just right here in the room. You'll be able to touch and feel it, feel it in a few minutes. And this is a creative way of capturing the attention of your customers. They listen to you and then you tell them the story and they just link better to your brand. So a bunch of ideas here. Um, I'm not gonna go on too much. This is another idea, something bulky, that it was an invitation for a customer, then you just bring it out, it's a, it's a picture frame out of cardboard and the customer can put a picture on the desk or whatever. But again, looking for cre creativity to obviously utilize the information, the profiling that, that we created to have, to have the customers to listen to our messages and to reinforce those messages too. And I leave creativity with this fantastic example. It's obviously a real example from AA. And what happened is eh, they have a problem of, and this is many, many years ago, I still use it because it's brilliant how to use creativity just to, to, just to, 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 to grow yourself pretty much. And they had a problem, their objective it was that people, they weren't renewing the membership. So what they do, they send this card uh, via direct mail and they tell the customer something to get you home if you don't restart your AA membership. And when they turn it around, this was made out of cardboard. It was, depending on where they, the target lived, they were London, Manchester, Oxford. Like, it was a fun way of saying, this will get you home by hitchhiking. And, and again, another way of saying something in a creative way uh, that is going to get your message across much, much more stronger. So that's, that's our third ingredient, which is creativity. All these ingredients are common sense. We all know about it, but sometimes we kind of just don't pay attention to some of these ingredients. And I can tell you, if you have good information and good sensitivity, but you don't have creativity, probably will fail. If we have no information about good creativity, maybe we'll fail. If we have good creativity and good information, but no sensitivity, maybe we'll fail. So, 
the, the purpose of this presentation is just to stress the importance of all these ingredients, or most of them, to working very strong together, and then will increase of, uh, the chances of better engagement and a better return on investment. So now money. Money is another critical in, in, um, ingredient for a successful engagement because if we don't have money, how are we going to have creativity? People, things cost money and even the things that we perceive that don't cost money, sometimes we need time and time is money. So money is really, really critical. Now, the way that we use our money and invest our budgets is even more critical these days. The old days, I remember the early days of marketing, when we had a budget just for the sake of doing an easy math, we have 50,000 pounds to spend this year, and then you had a target list and you have uh, 10,000 uh, prospects or customers in your target list, and then, um, then that will give you the available spend per prospect. So just for an easy math, in the old days, if I had 50,000, that was my budget, and I had at least, just putting a little bit higher, 50,000 pounds, 50,000 prospects and records, that means that I only have $1, one, uh, I'm just saying dollar because I see the mark of dollar there, I apologize to be pounds, one pound to spend for each customer, uh, for each customer engagement or for the whole year for that customer, and now, is one dollar enough? Because these days, oh, I'm, I'm going to dollars again, is one pound enough? Because these days, I tell you, in order to break out the clutter, the market is so saturated, so competitive, that we need to probably invest more per prospect or customer in order to get the right return, in order, in order to capture their attention, in order, in order to be relevant, and in order to sell our products. Now, a better way today, for me, is that you have the same total budget of 50,000. Now, we need to estimate how much do we have to invest per customer in order to capture their attention, to be relevant and tell them what they want to hear, and to make it easy for them to buy from me or from us. How much, how many times do we have to contact them? Do we have enough information? Do we have to retrieve information? Do we have to buy data? You know, and then our engagements, what type of creativity we're going to use. And we, when we made that estimation, now, again, if our estimation is not one pound, but it's 10 pounds, that we need to invest for contact in order just to have a chance to be successful, then 50,000 divided by 10 pounds that we need to invest, otherwise we won't have a chance, is 5,000 people that we can contact. So even though we have 50,000 records, it's only 5,000 records that we can afford to engage properly unless we increase our budget. And with this, I'm not saying that maybe ignoring the other, the other 45,000, but the other 45,000, we are going to have to just do some emailing blasts or things like that that are inexpensive and see if, if something will work. But if we want to get better return investment in this saturated marketplace, we need to be more focused. We need to spend more with less customer. Most of the time, this works much better, especially on the B2B scenario. This is very relevant, these products, when we talk about money, because it's all about return investment. It's all about maximizing that return investment. And this, we call it POS, chameleon POSs, and we have two versions. We have the digital version, and we have the paper version. And when these two products do, and you see them right here in the office, as you can see them here, and you can then we can demo them for you too, if you're interested. And if anybody in the office, if they want uh, to get this demo, please give us a call and we'll do that. But what is great about these products is that you purchase them and you can uh, adapt your messages for all your programs. This is POS for retail or even information for events, you know, hotels uh, to direct traffic, and the problem with the old POSs is that the return investment it was a little bit tough to get because you bought that and then once the event is over, once the promotion on retail is over, you need to, that doesn't work anymore. But these two things, you can actually adapt the thing. Obviously, the digital one is an easy one to understand because you will change the message every week in your store or every week in your event or, or, your, or your hotel or whatever it is. Um, 
to make it that one investment to make it maximizing your return. And the one to the right, actually you can take the top off, we can slide off the insert of the printing piece, and then we, you, you can order another printing piece, which is very inexpensive, and use the same product over and over again for so many different events. So talking about money, talking about maximizing return investment, again, ideas that will help you maximize that. <coughs> focus. Another ingredient is focus. And when I talk about focus, this ingredient is it's all about telling people what they want to hear. It's not about telling people what we want to tell them. It's not about telling people what we want to tell them. I'm just repeating myself. It's telling people about what they want to hear. If we want to break the surface and scratch the surface on having a good engagement. I'll give you this simple example. It's from a toy um, a big chain. Uh, that they sell toys and and actually there are two versions and this is based on information and profiling the version on the left it was targeted for customers that they had kids up to two years old and actually in this case they were females we went all the way that way and the one on the right <coughs> they were kids from five to eight years old and and they were more boys so when i'm talking about being focused Let's not try to tell the same thing to everybody because people are different and they buy from different for different reasons. Today we can profile, we can segment uh, our, our our contacts to our target list based on who they are on that profile. We can create different messages and different uh, creativity, different images to be a little bit more focused and to be a little bit more targeted. So focus, especially today, that is so hard to be heard by our customers is absolutely critical. Persistency, another ingredient, persistency. I remember I, it was Peter Drucker that says, this is a big marketeer guy that says, uh, somebody asking, when do you give up doing marketing and contacting your customers? And he said, I give up when they give in. We, we never give up. We need to be persistent. And if any of you had had an experience in sales, Probably you remember the times that it was the persistency that got you the order. Now, when I'm talking about persistency, I'm talking about persistency being respectful with sensitivity, with ingredient number two. If persistency is by itself and it's not together with sensitivity, then probably you will, you will fail. So we need to be persistent, but we need to have an excuse, like I said before, to make the contact, make the engagement, and we have to be respectful, we have to be informative, we have to be helpful, or we have to be entertaining. So persistence is critical. And I remember my days also in sales, when I was just almost about to give up with a customer, and I just thought to myself, you know what, I'm gonna go and visit him one more time with this excuse, and that was that one more time that made me a sell. So, Sometimes if we give up too early and we are not persistent enough, we don't make the sale. And, and you know marketing is all about that, about being persistent but being sensitive too. Look what I got when I created my, my own, a couple of years ago, my own website from GoDaddy. It was every single day they were sending me like seven, eight, nine emails. For me, this is not being persistent. This was annoying to me and nothing was relevant, they were just only trying to sell me something and it just, this is not what I'm talking about when, when we're talking about being persistent. A good example of being persistent is this campaign that was done in another country but still relevant in the UK, it was done in Poland, where we created, it was created a puzzle and every puzzle piece had a message on the back, a critical message something that was informative and helpful. And we sent this campaign one piece at a time, three times nine pieces, you know, we, we, we send it apart every week to 10 days. You know, the campaign obviously lasted almost 11 weeks, but this is a way of being persistent. It's, it's persistent, but it's fun, it's helpful at the end. The customer has a good image of something that was relevant to them, this customer, uh, selected uh, uh, antique classic cars and on the back we give in our message in a fun way. So this is a good example of being persistent and this is really by example of being persistent. So we have to be sensitive. Incentives. 
this ingredient is critical. Sometimes we say the right thing to the right person, all these things, we use information, sensitivity, creativity, but the customer needs a, needs a little bit more to just make that, that purchase and, and then incentives. I think that everybody agrees that is, is critical. We, need, we can do incentives in a very uh, creative way too. We can add a personal barcode, in this case to win a washing machine, and that's the incentive. Now you come to our store and then you can win that washing machine. And this, today technology allows us to do a little bit of gaming with incentive, which is always more, more appreciated. Drive more traffic in this case to our shop, to a store, and then everybody will have a unique number and only one number is pretty much like the lottery will win. The good thing about this is all also be, being testing uh, to do incentives to build information. Uh, we talked that information is a critical ingredient and, and it's about the information that we need, not the information that we have. So having just information for the sake of it won't do it. And sometimes how do we get that information and incentives have been proven to be a critical strategy to build information that is going to help us profile customers and it's going to help us to have a more successful engagement. So we can do this by, uh, in this case, in the Audi, we can have a personal number and the registration plate of this car, maybe people to win a, a, an Audi or, or drive an Audi for the next couple of months or whatever and we can drive these people online and register to see if they want this incentive or they didn't and when they register we can ask for information so at the same time incentives they are not only used to encourage people and incentive people to buy our products but they also use often just to build information I encourage everybody uh, that if you have a lack of information and you need more, use your incentives to build that, those databases uh, and information in your CRM. Very, very critical. So, testimonials, I apologize, I was having another sip of water as I'm talking to my, we, we're getting closer to the end, uh, but testimonials are so, so critical too, because Basically, the market believes other customers more than they believe the brands. So reinforcing our messages with testimonials, with the voice of the customer is always very, very powerful. Another ingredient is easiness. It's all about making it easy for people to buy from you. I've seen so many campaigns that we say the right thing to the right person. We just being relevant. We telling them what they want to hear. And then we don't make it easy for people to buy. And you know what? People will go somewhere else. So this ingredient is critical. When I'm talking about easiness, easiness could, could just link with incentives, right? Make it easy for me to buy from you by giving me an incentive. But easiness can be linked to clarity. Uh, so the message is really clear and it's easy. The, the buying process is easy. It's quick. People today, they don't have a lot of time. So making it easy for me to buy, make it very clear, very easy process where I can click here and there. If you send me to a website and I can buy quickly. Or I can choose how I want to buy from you and you give me those options. So easiness, absolutely an ingredient that maybe we don't think about it. It's, it's embedded in our, in our subconscious and we, we use it, but we need to pay a lot of attention if our marketing, if uh, content engagement, they are, they are leading to easiness for from people to buy from us. And, and this could be an example from Verizon. It says, visit our Verizon store near you. Why not personalizing what is the address, what is the store that is more near to this person to make it easier for them to get to the store? Just a quick example. Obviously, the QR codes that send you to digital, that was a great idea. I don't think that it was as successful as we thought it would be, but there are great technologies today, like this technology here, where it's not a barcode, but anything that is promotional, it can be a scan. Obviously, if you have the technology and, and if you're interested in this, you can talk to us. Uh, but, you know, any, anything, just a mailer, without a barcode, it can be a scan by your customers with, a, with, a, with an iPhone or a, or a smartphone and actually be driven online where there's more information about that that the customer wants to read more about. So now it's not 
the no very sophisticated um, QR code. There's technology out there that all your marketing materials, they could be enabled to be online very quickly. And that's how you increase also your sales by making it easy for that customer. When timing is critical, the, the customer is excited about your product. And if you can sell it right there, you will. And then seamlessly, seamlessly, you are going to send them online. And this technology can scan from a mailer that you send, from packaging if you wish, from something that you might have, uh, POSs on the street. Uh, so it could be working with any channel. It's amazing. Even TV, with a TV commercial, they can scan that TV commercial and be sent online to read more about it and then to make to make a purchase right then and there. So again, ideas of great technology that is available today that maybe we're not utilizing this technology as, as much as we could. And, and obviously we're here also to, you know, to help you out with that. Channels, channels is, a, is, is another ingredient. Without a channel, you cannot deliver your message. So channels are a big thing. Now with channels, the, the, the challenge today with channels is that there's so many channels available in the marketplace today that, that actually we are getting confused how what criteria do I use to select my channel? And I can tell you, uh, every channel has their strengths and weaknesses, all of them. And it should be part of the strategy. And the strategy should drive the channel and not the channel to drive the strategy. I've seen in many cases people telling me, I'm going to do this campaign in email. Why? Well, I'm, I'm not sure because it's cheaper, because it's, it costs less. So we can never choose the channel and then make the channel drive the strategy. We need to start with the strategy. Who are we going to contact? Who is our target? What type of profiles do we have? What are we going to tell them? How many times are we going to tell them? What is going to be the creativity? What is going to be the messaging? And based on that, choose the best channels for that strategy. That's the way that works best. Uh, uh, for the simple reason, because uh, some people, they saw many obsessed with one channel versus another. And um, but I can tell you for every reason that you tell me that if you like email, email is better than direct mailing. I'll give you another reason why direct mailing is better than email. Or, or if TV is better than the internet, I'll give you another reason because the internet is better than TV or, or vice versa. So all the channels are here for a reason. Don't get stuck into trying to, to win this war and this battle who is the best channels because all the channels are. Yes. Select your strategy first, and based on that strategy, just choose the best channels that link to that strategy. Get to know their strengths and weaknesses, yes, and then do it that way, and you will increase your chances of doing much, much better. Um, when we talk about channels, I have to talk a little bit about print media very, very shortly, because for many years, they were saying that print media, I won't be saying, will be dead, but uh, things uh, have changed big time, and actually, especially direct mailing, it has been increasing for the last couple of years. It had a little dip because it's normal, all the new channels, whatever and all, I, that excitement, but direct mail is just really, really very strong. And if you wonder why direct mail and print is still very strong, just think about a direct, a direct mailer. A direct mailer has more information. If you think about the database, when you have a, direct, a, a database that is linked to the direct mail, and it gives you more information as a marketer as a marketer to be more relevant and more personal with that. Because when you are doing a campaign with email, the email can be TVA at whatever, whatever. It gives you no information about that recipient. When you're doing telemarketing campaigns or whatever, it's a phone number, no information about that. When I have a database that is an address, I know where that, per where that people live. And I, I know information that maybe that area is a more a white color area of people that make more money or less color area. Or there's more kids or less kids or more people uh, single or married or whatever. So a data list that, that, that is uh, uh, a direct mailing data list, that information is absolutely great. And that's what marketeers uh, uh, obviously use um, direct mail uh, very often. There's no spam. It's no problem when you send something out in the post. 99% is going to get there and there unless you get lost. But the spam problems with email, for example, there's no there. 
on the touch and feel, you can touch and feel all those uh, V print, the video and print product that I show you, the chocolates, it's something that you can touch and feel and it, it makes you engage better with the customer. Right, you can send attachments, promotional items and things like that, that also touch and feel. There is more focus, uh, and when I say more focus, when, and there's been research about this, I think, but when we receive our mailers, is when we get home, we are not doing anything else, we're tired from working all day, we just go into the kitchen, or we just go into the living room, we put the kettle on, we have a glass of wine, or three glasses of wine, depending on the type of day that we had, and then we sit, and then we go through that mailing, very focused, when we receive marketing messages on our computers, you know, we're doing email, we're doing other things, we're receiving the message, we are not as focused as we are when we receive uh, direct mailers. Also on the phone, text messages, we're doing a million things, multitasking, whatever. So this is a very powerful, I'm just is stressing some of the power of, of direct mail because sometimes uh, there's some people that are still a little bit skeptical and, and direct mail is growing for a reason and this is some of the reasons why it's growing. And the last one is less competition. I mean, as a direct mailer, you send a direct mail to your customers and they're going to receive three, four, five direct mailers or letters every day. So you're only competing with a few when you send in emails, and I'm not against emails at all, because I think that email together with RML is a fantastic combination. Like I said before, all the channels, they have strengths and weaknesses, and, and the trick is just to put them together when it's relevant based on the strategy. And I like email for many other reasons, and it's just fantastic, but right now, because there it was a little bit of skepticism in the past, and when we talk about channels, I, I need to stress this. So, you know, again, emails, we, we get 200 emails. We, got, we get only a few letters, so it's less competition. We get, you know, hundreds of uh, text messages too. So, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to share this in a helpful way. When you want to target somebody that doesn't know who you are, you don't have a relationship, you want to capture their attention, you don't want a lot of competition around maybe direct mailing is a, is a good, is a good uh, channel. Now, if you have the relationship that the customer loves you, loves your brand, whatever, you want to send something quick, email is much faster and, and it will cost you less. So I'm not against email or anything else, but again, this is the power of the direct mail and the print, some of the power of it. And, and again, just build your strategy first uh, as that ingredient and, and then, you know, choose the, the channels based on that strategy. And we're just wrapping it up right now. Another ingredient is testing. Testing is critical. Uh, we, we, we don't have crystal balls and mighty ones, so we don't know what's going to happen most of the time. We, yes, we build good campaigns based on our experience and based on all these ingredients, and that increases our chance of doing better. But there is nothing like testing. And with the technologies that we have today, just test. If you are not sure if these mailer or this email will work versus this one, just take a, a small representation of your target list, test it, measure it, track it, you know, analyze it, and then, and then you, can, you can send your big campaign afterwards. So testing is absolutely critical. And tracking, tracking builds information. And like I said at the beginning of this, thing, information is also very critical to make the right decision. So if we track mm -hmm. our campaigns and we retrieve that information, then our next campaign is going to be better. Uh, and will make better decisions. Um, this is pretty much the last slide. There's one more I think, but um, the tracking what, when, and how, there's three main reasons why we need to track. Obviously, to know if our campaign has brought us a return on investment, but, but please don't measure in a way that you send one campaign out, you didn't get enough sales, and then you drop it, because sometimes it takes more than one contact to bring that return investment. My, my rule of thumb is that if you see an improvement in your contacts with engagement with the customers, that means that you're in the right track. And if you're retrieving information to make better decisions on the way, keep going and then measure the return investment later on. You cannot measure not most of the time the return investment in one campaign, even though there are exceptions that you could. Uh, knowing the cost of acquiring a new customer so you know how much you are gonna have to sell to that customer for how many months or whatever in order to justify that marketing investment. That's the reason why we track. And definitely to improve the, the following campaigns, we need to track simple things like who is responding and who is not. 
and who is buying and who is not. Because based on that, we go back to the profiles and we feel, oh, this, this profile is not responding, so we're failing in making awareness, so let's fix that. Oh, this, this profile is responding, but it's not buying. What is happening in the closing stages? And we fix that. Oh, this customer, is re this profile is, re is responding and is buying. This is our target. We need to find more people that look like them. So all this tracking and analyzing is absolutely critical. And again, if you go to our website, I'm trying to help you to, if, if you go to our website um, under uh, suggesting reading papers, under our marketing library, there are um, a couple of white papers that they talk a little bit more in depth about um, tracking and analytics and data and that type of thing. If you're more interested in this particular slide. And the last one, our last ingredient is partners. Uh, and partners is critical because we, we, we cannot know everything in marketing. I, I think that I've been in marketing and sales for over 30 years and I'm still learning. I still don't know everything. And, and, and not only we don't know everything and we cannot know everything at all times, we don't have the resources sometimes to, to do everything we want. And by partnering with other companies and, and, and people, and other people, including other people, we increase our chances of, very, of getting a better engagement and better contact engagement and a, and a better uh, a, a, a return on investment. So partners, are absolutely critical. I can tell you personally, this is my story. My best engagements, they always been with somebody else. All the engagements that I did by myself, they were less successful than engagements that I did with other people because for the only reason that there's no crystal ball. So by creating chemistry with other people and other company and building something together, we always increasing the chances of having a better engagement. And, and that's it. Um, this is my contact details. Herman is spelled German at x1.ltd.uk. Again, our website is x1.ltd.uk.